welcome to the Simple Sophisticate Podcast, where intelligent living is paired with signature style. I'm your host, Shannon Abels. And whether you're listening on your commute, exercising, working in the garden, or sitting down with a hot cup of tea or a cafe au lait, thank you for tuning in. Let's get started. Welcome to the 149th episode of The Simple Sophisticate. Today, we're talking about food and fashion, and primarily fashion. And when I say fashion, I actually mean style, because we're not talking about trends. We're talking about how to cultivate a true style for the entire year. That is right. I have been inspired by two brand new books that hit the market tomorrow, April the 4th. I've been fortunate enough as well to receive both these books ahead of time and peruse them and help you work your way through them, let you know why they're worth your wild pickup, and kind of give you a taste of them to see if indeed it is something that you might want. But before I get to that, today's Petit Plaisir is a cookbook, and it is an everyday cook's cookbook from one of the best restaurants and bakeries in the country, in my opinion, and not too far away from my back door. So I'm excited to share with you exactly what that is and share with you some of my favorite recipes as I flipped through and want to share. But to today's topic, we're talking about style, how to cultivate your true style all year long. Back in 2011, Inez de la Fressange released her first book, Parisian Chic, and it was a bestseller internationally for those looking for classic French style, knowing where to shop in Paris, knowing how to pull all together the lifestyle, everything. Well, she has come out with a second book and it is being released tomorrow and it's called Parisian Chic Lookbook. What should I wear today? And it is exactly that, a look book. I'm going to talk you through it show you the highlights and let you know what I think we can really pull from it and why it is a valuable resource. So we're going to get started with a quote from the book. What's true style? Knowing how to mix the right combinations of ingredients. Ah, so it kind of does deal with food, doesn't it? (laughs) Most of us have heard of and are incorporating into our lives a capsule wardrobe, something we talk about often here on the podcast and on the blog. And It's something that you're constantly paying attention to. Yes, you do build a foundation, but you're constantly editing and adding and updating. But as much as we love to hire a stylist to tell us what to wear every day, even if we do have it in our closet, it's how to style the clothes that we've invested in that kind of gets confusing. We either absolutely cannot afford such an extravagance as hiring a stylist or, well, let's get serious. We can't have a stylist with us every single moment of the day. The truth is we can actually do it ourselves, but we need to learn from someone who knows how to do it. And then when we learn those tools, learn those skills, we can apply it to our lives effortlessly every day, all the time. Understanding how to cultivate true style into our lives throughout the entire year is completely possible. So long as we learn the necessary tools and fail safe combinations. Former Chanel model, as I just spoke about Inez de la Fressange and the epitome of Parisian chic has just released her new book to follow up her wildly successful first Parisian chic. And in it, she does the work of the stylist for us. Now, it is a lookbook, as I said, and it really walks you through all sorts of different occasions that you need an outfit for from day to night. And basically, she does everything for you except shopping. With nearly every page in the 130-page book filled with styled outfits on a model showing us what it looks like and noted for which occasion this outfit would be perfect for, this lookbook is your guide when you step into your closet. This lookbook is the finishing touch to building your confidence that you do know how to dress well without having too many clothes to choose from and not feeling as though you have nothing to wear. What I would like to do today is share a glimpse of Inez's suggestions and my favorite outfits that she shares in the lookbook. And then I highly recommend you pick up or at least check this book out. I was tickled with what she has come up with. I haven't actually seen a book like this, especially with the French aesthetic, the French effortlessly chic approach. 
I'm a very visual person. And so seeing it come together, not just seeing the items in front of me, but seeing it on a model, not something that's this grand designer outfit, but the everyday items we all have in our wardrobe made me think, oh my gosh, it is that simple. And while I know this innately and I do this, it was validating and it gave me a few extra ideas, which I'll share with you in today's episode. If you are someone who appreciates the classic Parisian chic approach to style, if you adhere to a capsule wardrobe approach, and if you want to keep it simple, but mix high and low items, ensuring you look effortlessly stylish, take a look inside this book and discover how to become the stylist you've always wanted to hire. So how does we begin? Number one, we stock the closet with the essentials. We start with the capsule wardrobe essentials, which I will provide a link to for what we've talked about here on this podcast and on the Simply Luxurious Life. I actually adhere to a 10 to 15 wardrobe item uh, for capsule wardrobe, but there are a lot of different approaches. So look at hers, look at mine, but then she also lists the essentials for things beyond the capsule wardrobe. She lists the essentials for your handbags, your shoes, jewelry, lingerie, outerwear, scarves, and belts. Now, often we have almost everything we need in our closet, but a few finishing touches are missing. So if we take a look at her list, I think, as I said, they come and organize the categories I just mentioned. Find what you need or what to look for the next time you are shopping or a wonderful sale on your favorite designer clothing or accessories offers a beautiful price. Then pounce on it. And then you filled that gap and then you've given yourself so many other options. The key is to know what you're looking for. And that's what this list provides. And it's what kicks off the entire book. So that's number one, stock your closet with the essentials. Number two, stick to a dress code unique to every general occasion. With regards to business, all of us probably have a uniform that we stick to for our day job or our career job. It's a uniform that works for us. Uh, How to choose an outfit that transitions from workplace to another business appointment is something we also need to keep in mind. So how can we make sure that uniform can transition? Uh, Maybe we're going from our day job to apply for a loan. So we're going to the bank or maybe we're going to a business dinner afterwards. So we're still on the clock, but we also want to be able to relax and enjoy ourselves. But yes, we are still technically working. So she has a bunch of outfit ideas for that transition period. Um, And one of my favorites is called I have a tricky day ahead. So you have a lot of different odd things that you're doing and it's technically all business. And so her outfit idea, I'm just going to describe it to you. um, And then you'll find that it's in the book as well, is that she suggests silk print pants. They're quite in vogue right now. Maybe it's something you love. Maybe it's something you don't. Something to consider though, a V-neck sweater, black velvet flats, a classic watch. And if you're someone who likes bracelets, bangles, just simple bangles, but bangles. Now that might be something you want to tweak, but I think it'll give you an idea. It still looks nice. It has that casual effortless, effortlessly chic kind of look to it. And it will transition for a lot of different things things that you might have to do with your day. You're obviously not going for an interview. This isn't dressed up for an interview, but it's something that still looks nice and appropriate and can take you from all sorts of occasions to other occasions. She also has a list of outfits for family gatherings. Now this could be going to meet with your parents, having brunch with your sister. This could be meeting your great aunt. And that is actually the outfit that I want to spotlight for from her book. And it's called having lunch with a great aunt. So probably an aunt that's quite stylish if she's like my great aunt and is a hoot, just absolutely love having lunch with her in conversation. And so you have, you want to come dress well, but casual. And so the suggestion is high-waisted pants, a ruffled or signature blouse, depending on what you prefer. I would prefer simply a signature blouse, a pendant necklace, high heels or platforms, and a scarf as a belt to add a little signature touch. The next section of the book is for personal get togethers. We're talking date night. We're talking lunch with friends. We're talking maybe a dinner with an old flame as she has in her book. And that's the outfit that I actually loved. I may not ever have dinner with an old flame, but I might, (laughs) but I'm taking this outfit idea for sure. It's over the knee pencil skirt, a velvet jacket that hits at the waist, a camisole, heels, and a classic watch. Perhaps you've noticed that each of these outfits only involves five items. 
not a ton of layers, but layers that work and not a ton of jewelry, which is what I love about this. It keeps these outfit ideas simple. The next one is evening attire, and she has a handful of different fun outings and occasions. And the simple one that I chose was simply dinner at home with friends. So maybe you're hosting, but you don't want to get all dressed up. This is in the middle of the week. You want to have some friends over. You want to have fun with some recipes, new, some old ones. And so you're just going to wear blue jeans, a white blouse, a black belt, gold bangles, and again, those black velvet flats. Remember, we're sticking to these essentials that you can rotate through your outfit. But then don't forget about vacation. You got to have those outfits ready as well. The airport attire is the one I always like to hone in on to see how, for example, Inez would suggest traveling. And her outfit suggestion is stylish sweatpants, a t-shirt, a v-neck sweater, oversized, flat slide sandals, and a navy men's overcoat. So it's very loose, very comfortable, but it still has that effortless kind of pull together, but still a touch of, wow, how'd she do that? Again, the key is making sure it's quality items. And the other part of it is to make sure there's a touch of style, as we mentioned with the sweatpants. And the last outfit list of ideas that she shares are for special or simply unique occasions, things you don't do every day. And the outfit idea I chose was simply going to the museum. So maybe you're a museum buff and you like to hit those exhibits when a new one comes up. And this is something you may do by yourself with a friend, with a date, but the outfit is perfect. It's simple, but it's feminine. A black midi dress, perhaps a bodycon dress, a denim jacket, lace-up sneakers, white sneakers, a saddlebag, so maybe an, a crossbody or over the shoulder, and your bracelets. Again, so simple. So simple. Now, she has, like I said, over 130 pages of outfits. And those are the categories. So we just have one, two, three, four, five, six different categories. And she shows all these different outfits that some of you probably are thinking, yep, that's me. I I need that outfit for, I need, I have that occasion in my life. And others you're going to chuckle at. But at the same time, you may think, oh, that's actually a really good outfit. I might use it for and plug in the occasion that she hasn't covered in the book. So it's full of ideas. Now, the key is to kind of have a plan when you have these occasions. And that's really the tool that you want to take away from this book is, okay, I'm going here, I'm doing this, that outfit works there, I can mix and match this and that and the other. Once you start getting into those habits, you know what items you are going to want to have in your closet and have on rotation. The next thing, and what I want to point out to you is as I'm going through this book, and I flip through it a few times, is that you want to stick to neutrals. One common thread that I noticed through all of the items that Inez suggests is there's a neutral color palette. Let me just list off the colors that I noticed. Black, navy, white, khaki or beige, gray, light blue, and of course stripes. While there were a few signature pieces, a sequined gold camisole, a printed silk pants, as I mentioned earlier, a hot pink sweater, and a red saddle purse, these boisterous colors were actually very few, but they were powerful And because they were unique, they paired very well in a couple of different outfits with the other neutral items. The mixing and matching becomes easier when you would adhere to a neutral palette that complements your skin tone. So don't deviate from that. You know what colors will work for you. For example, the pop of color that I often choose is blush pink. My skin instantly looks more bronzed and healthy, even if I haven't been out in the sun. And it pairs well with everything else in my closet, depending on the season and occasion, because basically I have neutrals in my closets, which are navy, gray, black, white stripes, and light blue. It just works really well with that. Um, And it adds that pop of signature whenever I choose to wear it. So however you begin to build your capsule wardrobe and all the essentials that she lists... Keep in mind to fewer prints, more neutrals, and fewer bright colors, although you do want a few that are really going to complement your skin tone. The fourth concept that I want to bring up that I picked up from this book is finish with very few accessories, but don't forget them. So each of her looks as you pour through the book reveal typically one piece of jewelry being worn, if any, and an expected but signature tote, coat, or pair of shoes. It was just a nice relief to see how simple a beautiful, fantastic outfit can come together for our everyday lives. 
Number five is that you want to purchase well. So here we go again, quality over quantity. Don't be afraid to invest. Remember cost per wear, but you also don't want to fuss. So the key with Parisian chic style is mixing the high and low designers. A beautiful white silk blouse from Saint Laurent paired with classic denim jeans and costume jewelry bangles. Knowing that what you're wearing looks well on your physique will enable you to say no to extra details and finish with just the right amount of details that you want. Then once it all comes together, you can relax and enjoy wherever you are headed. The sixth concept I want to talk about is that she does share a long list of fashion style tricks, and I won't reveal all of them here, but I will reveal three of my favorites that I picked out and I said, Oh, I can do that. Oh, I'm going to try that. That looks like something fun. I just needed to have maybe someone say with her expertise, yes, do it. It works. So the first one of the three is to wear a khaki military jacket over a little black dress. I love that combination of masculine and feminine. Second, and I just need to go find some great t-shirts, is to wear a rock t-shirt or just a statement t-shirt with a pencil skirt, which I have tons of. How fun is that? Very serious and professional with something very casual and playful. And the third one is why not buy clothes in the men's department? We talked earlier about the oversized men's um, wool coat. That's a great idea. I actually have an oversized camel coat that I love. It just gives me lots of room to move around in. It's not stiff and it keeps me warm and I can wear lots of layers underneath it if I absolutely have to. So there's a bunch of style tricks that she talks about and some may speak to you and some may not, but those were three that did for me. I also want to share with you a list of items that she listed in her list of essential items um, that I have in my closet and I swear by, this is what I live in. Now, obviously I don't li didn't list everything that she listed because not all those things are going to work for me, but I would like to reiterate and confirm that so many of them did. And I'm going to start right off with something that some, some people either love or loathe jumpsuit. I love jumpsuits. I know some people don't like them, but they're simple and being someone who's tall, perfect for my body type. Denim jacket, love the layering piece, pencil skirts. I pick a lot of these up at J. Crew, and I have a link to those on the Simply Luxurious Life shop. Just check that out and you can see those, that link. A simple black dress. And again, the key is something that you like. It doesn't have to be small, it's just simple. A long shirt dress, black and or navy v-neck sweaters, black and or white t-shirt. I layer those all the time under my blazer. Speaking of blazers, I live in my navy blazer and my gray blazer. Trench coats, blue jeans, slip-on sneakers, wellies, or simply farmer ranch boots, a black tote, something I take to school and work every single day, a classic watch, a black and a brown belt, camisoles for layering, black panties and black bras, and then, as I mentioned earlier, I have a, I have a men's camel coat. It's actually a woman's just a size larger, but it's oversized and I love it. So that's just a sampling. I listed that on the show notes today, the simply luxurious life.com backslash podcast 149. You can take a look at those. And again, I'll provide a link to this, the simply luxurious life shop where I've done the shopping for you for your fall and spring and all season capsule wardrobe. Um, and it's all, it's been updated for this season as well. Um, ultimately seeing how to pull something together as this book does, seeing it on a model is a useful visual that we often do not see when it comes to basics. And we don't see it all in one place, meaning more than one outfit covered in gold that shimmers. This book will be easy to spot on your shelf as you look to use it again and again and again until these classic ensembles that she suggests for all these different occasions become ingrained in your memory. This is really a workbook. It is really a resource for you to learn from and then become the stylist that you've always wanted. The most significant takeaway for me was simply a sigh of relief, as I mentioned earlier, when I saw the outfits. The number of items involved were minimal. The key was quality items paired with finishing touches that worked with the woman's body and the other neutral pieces. So start with number one that we talked about today. Begin to build a foundation, which is the necessary clothing, and then have fun and look forward to stepping into your closet again. I'll provide a link to her book. I'll provide a few pictures as well from inside the book on today's show notes. You can take a look at some of the outfits that I was mentioning earlier in the episode. And... Um, Again, this book is being released tomorrow. Inez de la Frassange's Parisian Chic Lookbook, What Should I Wear Today? 
And the show notes are the simply luxurious life.com backslash podcast 149. Now stay tuned. We have a fantastic petite plaisir that um, is for all you home cooks out there that want to take it up a notch without getting too complicated. I'll be right back. All right. Welcome back. So today's petite plaisir is a brand new cookbook from the co-founder of Tartine Bakery and Cafe, Elizabeth Pruitt. It is her second cookbook and it is simply called Tartine All Day, Modern Recipes for the Home Cook. And it is a beauty. It just arrived a couple weeks ago and I got to flip through all the recipes. And I just want to say thank you, Elizabeth, because Tartine, which is in San Francisco, California, has been around since 2002 and it's well known for its breads and its pastries. And she is the woman behind the pastries. In fact, she was trained in Paris as well as the Culinary Institute of America in New York. And they cooked and lived and trained in France as well, um, before they opened up what is now one of the iconic bread, food, foodie places to go in America. And she's won a James Beard Award for her outstanding pastry cooking. Uh, I guess not cooking, but yeah, cooking in 2008, being nominated in 2006 and 2007. But what I love about this book is it speaks to you, the home cook. It doesn't speak over your head. It incorporates some very classic recipes and takes it up a notch. And well, let me just share with you a few of the recipes that caught my eye. Um, I have the book right here in front of me. And the cover, by the way, is not your classic cover, which I like why I like it even more. It's a picture of a copper bowl that has just finished cooking blueberry jam. And all the jam's gone, but it's stained with the blue and a few of the berries are in it. And it's just, you know, it, it's a, it's an actual, you're cooking. It's, this is what maybe you see in your kitchen. And there's something beautiful about that, what you create and the colors. And I can't imagine how that blueberry jam tastes. Anyway, so one of the things that caught my eye was that she gives you the recipe for making your own creme fraiche. How many of us, and I conclude myself in this list, have had a recipe for creme fraiche and we live in a place that doesn't have it in our grocery store? Well, now you have a recipe to make it on your own. She also offers a recipe for any day pancakes, but then if you want to have a buckwheat Dutch baby with sauteed apples, uh uh-huh, yeah, she has that recipe for you too. (laughs) And then panzanella is a recipe that I want to give a try. I have never had it, but I've seen it on various cooking shows and it looks so simple, but it looks like it would have a lot of flavor. So her bacon, lettuce, and tomato panzanella with basil salsa, salsa, salsa verde, excuse me. And then she has, and if it's from Tartine, you know it's going to be good, whole loaf, cheesy garlic bread. Oh yeah, the pitcher, the pitcher. Mm, I'll put a picture of that on today's show notes so you can take a look at why I'm kind of speechless. I want to have a bite right now and I probably would not be able to stop. (laughs) And then she also offers a bread pudding recipe, a savory bread pudding recipe though, with wild mushrooms and bacon. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I have a few more. Hang in there. I know you want to run to the kitchen and have a, a meal or a snack or something. I do. I do. I'm really hungry right now. Um, with regards to main dishes, pork chops in mustard sauce with apples. Mm, think of that combination. And then this one is so unique. It's if you love apple pie or apple tarts, she has a recipe called an apple beehive. And it looks like a beehive. You stack the apples so it has, and they're graduated, so they're smaller at top than the bottom. And, oh, what a presentation for your guests. I just, mm, I love it. I think it's fantastic. And it's laid out, if you do have uh, Julia Roberts, uh, Julia Roberts, Julia Child's cookbook, her initial cookbook, Mastering the Art of French Cooking. She kind of lays it out that way where she has the instructions and then the ingredients that you're using in that set of instructions off to the left-hand side. So they're right there. The measurements are right there. You're not scanning back to the next next page to see, okay, how many cups am I putting in this and how many teaspoons? No, the recipes are right there. And she's also given all the weights and measurements in the U.S. metric system or U.S. measuring system and then the European metric system, which it makes 
entirely more sense. But if you've never used it, then it's completely foreign to you like it kind of is to me. So she's done both of those in her cookbook for all the different listeners I know are tuning in because I know you guys are listening from all around the world. I, this book is just, I mean, I love cookbooks, so I'm probably kind of biased. But I'm going to be working with this cookbook this spring. It's a perfect spring recipe cookbook as well because they look simple. You don't have to stay inside too long. But all these new vegetables and uh, fruits are coming available at the farmer's market. And oh my gosh, to have those with these recipes. Anyway, be sure to stop by in upcoming weeks on the blog. And I'm sure I'll have a few of these recipes that I give a go. And I'll let you know how it turns out. So I'll leave a link on today's show notes to Elizabeth Pruitt's new cookbook that is being released tomorrow, Tartine All Day, Modern Recipes for the Home Cook. Visit the show notes at the simplyluxuriouslife.com backslash podcast 149. I hope you've enjoyed this week's Petit Plaisir, where each week ideas are shared to make the everyday all the more enjoyable. Tune in at the end of each Monday's podcast, where I'll recommend a book, a film, or a recipe. Anything that is a simple pleasure to satiate your sophisticated taste. Thank you for tuning in to the Simple Sophisticate Podcast, where intelligent living is paired with signature style. For more ideas and inspiration throughout the week, stop by the blog, thesimplyluxuriouslife.com, or pick up the book, Choosing the Simply Luxurious Life, A Modern Woman's Guide. To stay caught up on the most recent podcasts, blog posts, and receive exclusive news as well as an extra dose of inspiration, subscribe to the Simply Luxurious Life's weekly newsletter, which arrives in your inbox each Friday to enjoy with a hot cup of tea or your morning coffee, just in time to jumpstart the weekend. Until next Monday, I'm your host, Shannon Abels. Bon genie!